You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to I Am Heart Radio. Host Sue McDaniel will open your heart and unlock the natural healing power that is deep within each and every one of us. So now please welcome the host of I Am Heart Radio, Sue McDaniel. This is the I Am Heart Show. I'm your host, Sue McDaniel on Bold Brave Media, Talk Radio, and Tune In Radio. Thank you for being here. We're going to talk about, again this week, uh, self-love, because it's really a hot topic right now, and we've talked about it several weeks in a row. But I have new things I want to share with you this week that I've been off two weeks, and I've kind of done some work on myself in those two weeks and prior weeks, and kind of work some things out as you understand what that means in terms of loving myself and being kind and caring to myself first. And of course, always not beating up on myself before I do all of that, which is, you know, what we all tend to do to ourselves. But anyway, we're going to talk about that in a little different vein this week. And um, to begin, I would kind of like to share a story with you, a story that probably really applies to all of us about not only loving ourselves, but what we travel with as we travel our journey down the road. So here we go. So imagine you are out in nature, taking a walk in the woods. It's a beautiful day, and you're walking along a path that you've found. The sun is shining, it's perfect temperature, and although you're not sure where this path leads, or how long you'll be walking, you are enjoying this experience immensely. And you want to continue in this peaceful, serene setting for as long as possible. Now, imagine you come across a fellow traveler on the path who looks like he or she is in need of assistance. When you approach, the person explains that his ankle is hurt and he is unable to carry his backpack while walking. It's too full and too heavy to be supported by his injured leg. He asks, would you mind carrying a few items from my bag for me? He explains, the next town is just a mile or so up the trail, and you can leave that all those extra things at the local store where he will pick him, pick him up when he gets back to town. So, to help his fellow traveler, you agree to add the extra items to your backpack. After all, it's only a few miles, and you're enjoying this beautiful walk and have no other plans for the day. So, you add the traveler's contents to your backpack, and off you set on your way. And right away, you notice how much heavier your backpack feels with a good weight pressing down on your shoulders and back, extra weight on your shoulders and back. At first, you are uncomfortable, but you're feeling good about about helping a fellow hiker in need. So you remind yourself it's only a few miles to town and you push the thought of discomfort away as you continue. The birds are singing, you're enjoying every step of your hike, and soon you forget, soon you forget, you even have the extra weight on your back. 
an hour or so passes and you realize you still haven't made it to the town. Assuming just a little bit further, you keep walking. A few more hours pass and soon you've forgotten all about needing to find the town. The backpack is on your shoulders and the extra weight you're carrying is heavy. You've been carrying that backpack long enough. And it's become a part of your normal experience. But you're also getting tired. You've been hiking for a while and you feel heavy and lethargic. You start to drag your feet a little. And you start to stumble over a few roots on the trail. You just don't feel as energetic or as vibrant as you had earlier in the day. And your body seems to be slowing down. Finally, you sit down to rest. And immediately, you feel the relief of removing that extra weight. Your back strengthens, straightens up. You no longer have to bend over from the weight of the bag. You feel lighter. And the rush of energy moves up your spine. You'd been carrying that backpack with the extra weight for so long, you've forgotten it was there. You've also forgotten how light and naturally energetic you felt without it. This is a mistake I see so many make. We carry the burdens of our past so long that over time we forget we're carrying them. But we never release them or take the backpack off because we've never truly forgiven them. There are lots of lessons in this story. You know, number one, we do carry our past around, carry our grudges, our things we want to hang on to and not turn loose, carry the story of what happened to us during a childhood or happened to us in life somewhere else, an experience, something that may be deeply hurt. And like him and his backpack, we carry them so long that we kind of forget they're there thinking, well, they probably won't affect our life anymore. But the truth is that they do. And so when we can take the backpack off, backpack off, it changes your energy. Notice his legs were dragging. He was slowing down. He didn't feel as vibrant or as energetic as he had earlier. And when he took it off, he felt all of a sudden much lighter than carrying that huge backpack around. And the thing then kind of happens to us. When we carry our stuff, our stories, our lack of forgiveness, our judgment, our whatever we're carrying around, it weighs us down. Even though we may have forgotten it or think we've forgotten it, and we're energy, all of, all of us are energy. And our body is still holding that energetic vibration of that event. It's imprinted in our system until we truly process it, forgive it, decide to let it go. And many times we don't do that. But we don't do it intentionally. We don't do it because we don't remember that that piece is there affecting us. So taking off your backpack is kind of like how it feels energetically to forgive someone or to turn loose of something that happened in the past. It's a huge thing. So when you do that, remember you release that energy, that heaviness, that 
lack of joy and love that you carry when you do that. And many times we're unconscious of that because it's held in our, not in our conscious mind, but our subconscious mind. And that keeps track of everything. But the weight of it can get pretty heavy. And if we don't ever clean house, or we ever don't say, wait a minute, I noticed something. That was really an interesting thought that passed through, or an interesting reaction, or that was a strange belief that just floated through my head. That we may be carrying um, old baggage from a very, very long time. But I love this story because it's so visually gives us the idea of what happens to us when we're carrying around the past or carrying around some negative feelings, negative emotions, negative thoughts, negative beliefs. And we don't even realize they're dragging us down. And this story is important right now. It's been important actually for a couple of years now. As we set the reset button, And as we've talked about shifting who we are and shifting into the new human and the new earth and all the things that are talked about, it's time to look at our backpacks. And if we haven't taken some of the things in there that are no longer good for our life or good for our new life, then it truly is time to take a look at that backpack and see how we can make it lighter how we can feel lighter. How we can change who we are by not carrying all that around. And that is an act of self-love. And that's why I told you this. Which I like this story. Because we may not think of turning loose of the heavy things you're carrying in your backpack as an act of self-love. But it is. Because we have to love ourselves enough to know that that is not good for us to carry anymore and that that is not number two who we are. We don't need to carry that anymore. And self love really comes from our heart, which you know is the most powerfully energetic organ in our body which is our connection to our higher self, to our soul, to the divine, to universal love, to God, whatever works for you. So when we can open up to that and turn loose some of the, I don't know, trauma, hard feelings, uh, whatever that we're carrying from the past, it changes our world. And the point is it changes our world because we can love ourselves more, But you know what? It changes the world of everybody else. All the people around us, all the people in our city, in our town, in our county, in our state. When we change our energy so that we love ourselves, we give that that positive energy to the whole world. We change the collective. And we grumble and gripe about all the chaos in our world right now. But you know what? The only way we can really change a whole lot of it, because we can't do much about many things that are happening right now. They've got to play themselves out. But we can change ourselves. And we change our energy from negative to the positive self-loving energy. We give that out to the collective, to the world. And it's like one drop of loving, joyful happiness in the big ocean. And there are lots of drops of loving happiness in the ocean. But we have added our drop. And we have made a difference in the whole world when we do that. We've met up us, the people around us, and the whole world with light and love and that kind of energy. And that's exactly what we need right now. That's really important. So think about this as you think about your backpack. We'll talk some more when we come back. This is Sue McDaniel on the I Am Heart Show on Bold Brave Media, Talk Radio, and TuneIn Radio. 
What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick. Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation if you seek a courageous advocate prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations carol ann hamilton is the one for you Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration, plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. This is the I Am Heart Show. I'm your host, Sue McDaniel, from the studios of Bold Brave Media Talk Radio and tune in radio. We're talking about self-love. Just talked about the backpack you carry as you walk through life. What do you have in there? What is heavy or negative or has been in there a very long time? Or is there lots of lightness and joy and happiness and love in there? And if not, what can you do to add more to that? And it's important really now because, you know, we're living in, like I said before, a world in which we're in a reset or a shift. And there's lots of people holding light and love to the world and to humans and to all the chaos and the situations going around. And remember, there are two kinds of energy. Energy that comes from love and energy that comes from fear. And they're very different kinds of energies. Fear is a low vibration, dense energy, and love is a high vibration energy. So what comes from love are things like hope and gratitude, forgiveness, compassion and kindness, patience. And what comes from fear is things like resentment and hate and cruelty and lack or despair, which is what we don't need in the world right now. Absolutely. And what we've had in the world for a very, very, very long time, which is the point. Our shift is really to change that because it's we've lived in a world of fear for a very, very long time. I mean, we all have. We, that's what we've, we've known, this life and maybe other lives. And we've been consumed by it. And it's the, it's the underbelly of almost all the things that are unraveling right now, of the, you know, censorship and the the cruelty and all the all the things that are maybe controlled or seem totally out of control. It has dictated what happened on this planet for a very long time. And so fear kind of pulls you out of who you really are because you're really a spirit, a soul living in this body. And fear kind of pulls you out of that. And it tells you what to think and believe and and gives you a false sense of reality. But we don't want it dictating our life anymore because it gives us a false sense of reality. And it's have a, had a grip on us human beings and as a control controlling us. And we don't want that anymore. That's not the kind of world we're going to live in. We 
We want a world of love and light. And so that shift, and it's important we understand this, that shift, remember it's a from the inside out shift. We've talked about from the inside out for a very long time. And that our heart and our, our higher connection comes from the inside out of us, from our power center, from our energy center. And so it's like the superpower of love. It's feeling everything and breathing, bringing feeling into everything. And even though sometimes it's tense, it brings love and compassion to our life. And it tells us that even if it, if it appears not to be, all is well. So it's the time we stepped up as, as individuals for ourselves because, oh my goodness, can you imagine a life that's filled with more loving patient, kind, gentle, nurturing energy than fear. But for everybody else to step up and to live from that space of loving energy and not fearful energy. And you know what? We have a choice. I've been working with someone for weeks and weeks and weeks who's told me that we have a choice. We can either choose fear or we can choose love. And for someone who's done that for a long time, it's easy to choose that quickly. If you have not, then you have to kind of work through some of the fear to get through the love. And I've been there. And it's not always easy. But the deal is here. We're responsible, each and every one of us, for what we feel, what we think, um, our behavior, our attitudes, our beliefs from the inside of us. I mean, we're bigger than all that, but still in this human body, body, and we are just humans living on the earth, I mean, our responses and our reactions are our responsibility. It's like the buck stops in here. So it's time we took a look, and it's a baby step look. It's It's take it one day at a time and one moment at a time and take a look at what you're choosing and in any, in any moment what's your choice how do you react and behind that reaction what feelings and thoughts and beliefs might you have in your backpack that will be you know moving you to act that way because that's where that comes from. And so choice is a really big word that's floating around a really, lot, really, really a lot right now. In terms of knowing we have a choice. We can either choose to live from our heart, to live from a loving spot, a caring spot, a centered spot. Or we can choose to live from fear and be angry and separate and and respond totally different to the people we're around and to the world. So it's kind of like you're printing a canvas, canvas for your life. What's on your canvas? Is it canvas of happiness and love and joy, appreciation, gratitude, looking forward to the future? Or are you stuck? Are you stuck in the fear thing? So all you can do is just watch yourself. Be with yourself, which sometimes is hard for us to do. It's hard for us to do that because we're not used to doing that, number one. Used to running and doing, and some of us have very, very busy lives. So spending time with ourselves is like, whoa, what do you mean, baby? I don't have time for that. But it's time we had time for that. And like, like Eckhart Tolle and everyone else has talked to us for a very long time, we have this one moment. In this one moment, what do we want to feel? What do we want to think? What do we want to take from our backpack and live with? Or what do we want to let go? In terms of how we respond, what we embrace, what we honor, what choice we make. And you know the really big deal is? We're free to choose either way. 
We are free to make a choice of love and love or fear. That's a way cool thing. And with my experience, it's like a simple thing, and it's not necessarily easy all the time. But it's stopping and it's finding that pause place, that quiet place. Stop running from it and pause and take some deep breaths and take some more deep breaths and take some more deep breaths and pause. It's a quiet spot. It's a neutral spot. It's a place where we can stop and take a look at what are we doing? What are we feeling? What are we thinking? And it takes some practice. It's not always easy. But once you get used to doing it, it becomes easier all the time. And it's actually a way for us to heal. It's a way for us to heal in many ways. When we're triggered, it's a way for us to heal, to stop and look at what what just what just hit me like a bat. What got me? Why did I react that way? I'm going to stop and pause and look at this and see if I can figure out what happened here? What was the fear? What was the trauma? What was the experience? What did I believe about myself? It's a huge deal in terms of not living in fear and instead living in self-love. Because if you can do that and stop and live enough, live enough self-love to stop and say, whoa, this isn't loving to me. I don't like this. Loving to me would be Responding in a calm way, not being having this fear run through my body. That's loving me. I want to live that way. So I'm going to stop and pause and breathe. See if I can figure out what what got me. You know, we've got I got the beauty and or the beast in us. We all do. And so let's look for the beauty in us. And at the same time, To love the beast. Because our beast needs our love. Just as the beauty does. Because you know love is everything. Love heals all. And that's what our heart is telling us many times. You know, ah, I'm here with you baby. I can heal this. I can heal this. Yeah, there's a beast in here. But all it needs is some love and light. Because it hasn't had any for a very, very long time. So I know if you have a trigger, you get triggered. If you feel a lot of this hot energy coming up, please just be observant in that moment. And please don't beat yourself up. The deal is be grateful you can see it because that means you can change it. You can be free of it. See, this is the freedom we're talking about. That backpack may have had that moldy thing in there for a very long time. And now you're free of it. You've got your own power back. You're painting your own canvas in life. You're not being dependent upon a fear or someone else or an expectation of someone else to tell you who to be and what to be. That's the deal. That's self-love. Self-love is catching yourself in these moments when something triggers you or you're afraid or you're, you relive a trauma and saying, wait a minute. I'm going to love myself enough to take a look at this so I can let it go. I don't have to carry it around in my backpack anymore. That's a really big deal. I don't think we think of self-love that way. We think of doing things for us, but we don't think of it as healing us. And this is healing us. So that's a really wonderful, huge choice we're making. So think about that as you think about the future. I know many folks are really scared about the future. You know what? We can't, we don't have the power inside of us to change that right now. What we have the power to do is change ourselves. And as we change that, we change ourselves, we change the collective. We have the power. We are the power to love and not fear. You're listening to the I Am Heart Show with host Sue McDaniel on both Brave Media Talk Radio and TuneIn Radio. Author. 
radio show host and coach, John M. Hawkins, reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse. Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. This is the I Am Heart Show on Bo Great Media Talk Radio and TuneIn Radio, and I am your host, Sue McDaniel. I have some quotes here on self-love, and I like some of them a whole lot. And this is one I do like. Loving yourself does not mean being self-absorbed or narcissistic or disregarding others. Rather, it means welcoming yourself as the most honored guest in your own heart, a guest worthy of respect, a lovable companion. Another one says, till you value yourself, you won't value your time. Till you value your time, you won't do anything with it. I love this one. It says, did your mom ever tell you, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all? She was right. And talking nicely also applies when you're talking to yourself, even inside your head head and how about this plant your own garden decorate your own soul instead of waiting for someone else to bring you flowers important quotes I want to share a bit about here just a bit about loving yourself and seeing yourself as worthy to be loved to have self love part of this is you know Not being afraid of being scared of yourself, of being alone. And this has been hard in the last winter, in the last few years, because we have been more isolated, more alone. So it's learning to love yourself and want to spend time just with me. And it's a scary thing in the beginning. It's almost like you're a stranger. But it's a baby step thing again. I'm going to say baby step again. Because... You take baby steps and you are grateful and you appreciate yourself for doing that. And please don't beat yourself for not taking giant monster steps because that's too much. This is a process and it takes time. But if you take baby steps to spend time with you, you might discover more things about you you didn't know. You might discover what about you makes you wonderful. The second thing is... Get rid of the labels you put on yourself. We've all been through a lot in life, and sometimes things were not a lot of fun. So this lady says, I thought all those bad things had tarnished me some way. That I was the girl who was raped, or the girl who married the guy who turned out to be a drug dealer. 
or I was a suicidal, suicidal, depressed girl, et cetera, et cetera. All the bad things that I'd been through. I actually carried those labels around me for a long time. And that was a big problem. Because when I lived my life thinking I was just those things, I was miserable. You may feel this too. Maybe you struggle with your weight and have branded yourself as the fat kid. Or maybe you were had a nickname in high school that wasn't very nice or you were bullied. And you can't seem to let go of that image. It's in your backpack. So whatever it is, whatever labels you're putting on yourself based on that past experience, it's time to let it go. You can't move forward while you're hanging on to all that stuff. See, your backpack's heavy. You're being weighed down. So make a list of those labels, burn them, cut them up, tear them up, throw them out the window, and go, who do I want to be? Who do I want to be? And focus on what makes you happy. Not on what impresses other people. How many of us live for other people, not for ourselves? Take have a career we don't want. Do all kinds of things that really they're not make us happy. They don't they make don't make us feel good. Because self love is knowing that you really deserve the world. I mean, you really deserve much better than you've been living or acting or being. See, nobody taught us to be good about our ourselves to love ourselves growing up it wasn't something we talked about in school they don't talk about it much they don't talk about self-worth they may even think those are selfish to think about that but if you're unhappy with your life if you want to love yourself more if you want to change it if you want to be the person you've always dreamed of being and let all that want love and joy and happiness and energy out then Look at, look at a question like, am I living based on false beliefs about who I am? Do I need to feel important to other people or feel important to me? Can I, can I not be myself around people? Do I think my behavior is wrong? I mean, where are you? Do you I think my no one's ever going to love me? Look at all of that. That's what this time is about. That's that's loving yourself. It's just we haven't thought about it that way. We haven't thought about loving yourself that way. We've thought about other ways of loving ourselves, like what we can do for ourselves. But actually, it's that connection with yourself that's really loving yourself. It's getting in there and digging around and finding out what trash you have in there and what treasures you have in there. Because I'm sure there are treasures, lots of them. And I've done that for a while now. Yeah, there's some trash in there. There's still some trash in there. There will always be trash in there. But there's also some treasures in there. It's really fun to dig around and find them and go, oh, wow, wait, cool. I didn't realize that was in there. Because, see, we may be a higher self connected to the universal love and spirit and God and, and divine and whatever you want to call that. But we're also a human being. And it's time we learn to love ourselves. That's really what the big thing we're here for on this little planet right now. But somebody forgot to tell us that. You know, because you spend more time with you than anybody. And sadly enough, we often praise and love others and give compliments to others but we can't give one to ourselves, even when we do a good job. We do a good job. We take ourselves for granted. It's like, oh yeah, I forgot about me. I have a friend who has family and she's busy. And um, I said to her a couple of weeks ago when her husband was gone, hey, that's a wonderful time. Why don't you take some time just for you? So what would you love to do? Just because no, I knew she liked to read. I knew there were some things she'd love to do just for herself. Take some time just for you these three days he's gone. That would be wonderful. And I couldn't convince her to do that. She went, time for me? What do you mean time for me? I got to mow the yard. And I don't know if she did or she didn't. 
But I'm hoping that what I said is like just, just a, just, just a nudge or a crack in there to say, Hey, you're important too. You do and do and do and do and do for everybody else. When do you do for you? Because that truly is self-love. But sometimes we forget about ourselves. Or we neglect ourselves. And, you know, self-love is a really important way of being human. Our human is changing a lot right now. We've got all this new energy coming in and with all the things that we are coming up for us to look at inside to heal. Lots of people are feeling lots of emotions right now and lots of thoughts. And feeling those feelings is important. And that is self-love because we've not in our life really agreed to feel our feelings. We've really wanted to put them away somewhere and not, which is what I Am Heart is all about, feeling your feelings. But it's important that we, we come to know this part of us who's a human being. He or she is really darn important. And one of our biggest lessons here on this planet when we've come here is to love ourselves. That's, that's kind of one of our lifetime lessons. And, you know, we all come with all kinds of lifetime lessons. Some are, some are specific to us. And some are specific to everybody. This is an everybody one. So, you know, you can look at yourself. And we're talking about loving ourselves unconditionally. I think that's kind of a big word. Let's just talk about loving ourselves a baby step. And getting to loving ourselves totally unconditionally. That would be wonderful if we could get there. That's our goal. But you know what? This takes time sometimes. We're still in kindergarten. And we have to get there one baby step at a time. But it's really important to be aware of in this moment. Look at your behaviors, your thoughts, your emotions, beliefs. Even look at the things you don't like or the things you do like. You know, look at the beauty, look at the beast. Look at every nook and cranny if you want to and see what's in there. What's working for you? It's not working for you. You know, what's in your backpack that is weighting you down as opposed to lightening your load? So, you know, a way to do this is to pick just one teeny tiny thing, one thing. Don't make it a big deal. Pick one thing you don't like about yourself, your body, your thoughts, your feelings, your beliefs. And then instead of criticizing and judging yourself about it, try holding your hands on your heart or holding it in front of your heart or just holding it in your hands and saying, I love you. I love you. I love you that I need to lose some weight. I love you that I'm lost to weight and my body's changed. I love you that I'm really particular. I love that I'm perfectionist. I love this about me. Whatever it is, love it. It, it will think, be eternally grateful that you love it. So your body just loves to be loved. It loves that loving, vibrant energy of being loved. That's healing energy. Even when you don't feel well, when your big toe hurts or you have a stopped up nose, love yourself with it. That's huge. Allow it to be okay. Allow it to be a part of you. We accept animals and children and friends, but we're judgmental about ourselves. Too many expectations. You know, we're sometimes our worst energy. Remember, the way to heal the world is the more we love ourselves, the more we change the world. The more you love yourself and can turn loose of your weight and the baggage, the more energy and loving, loving energy you send to the world, and that changes everything for us. That's how we get out of our chaos. It's our power. So take it back for you. This is the I Am Heart Show. I am Sue McDaniel on Bold Brave Media Talk Radio and Tune In Radio. We'll be right back. 
radio show host and coach, John M. Hawkins, reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse. Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, Hope, and Support for Caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. I love stories from real people that talk about how they learn to love themselves because they're real people and we're real people too. So I want to share some of these. We've talked about them before, but I didn't share all of them. This one I love. I learned to love myself when I came to the realization, Stanley, sadly only a year ago, that no matter what happens in life, the only person that will be there for me always is me. So I had to get to know her. To be honest, I'm still getting to know her, me, and thus far, She's a pretty cool human. This is someone from Canada. I realized how important it is when I noticed how hateful my comments toward myself were. My advice to anyone, to someone else on a similar issue was so different from the way I talked to myself. I realized I don't treat myself like a friend would. Instead, I'm my own bully. And that sparked a call for action. Number three, I always heard about self-love. I honestly never knew its meaning, meaning until my experience was shattered. I had to work through the death of my fiance, my grandfather, my stepmom, and my best friend. Through great research, I was able to understand what self-love is. Self-love includes my mind, body, and spirit. I use rose water baths, watching the TV show Masked Singer, reading, creating vision boards, eating a cup of ice cream, yoga, finger painting with the toddlers, walking in the park, and simply eating Chinese food with my teenager. Doing the actions you love is a part of self-love. Through self-love, I am able to heal properly. When I was a teenager, I finally was given my own room. There I could decorate, arrange furniture, play in music, music to please myself, and escape from whatever chaos was present in the rest of the house and with my family. I had a favorite picture on the wall, and every year on my birthday, I would write myself a letter and hide it behind that picture until my next birthday. Like opening a special present to myself. I could see how I had grown 
and how many goals I had achieved. I learned it was okay to take care of me. I would be a better daughter, sister, and friend because of it. Years ago, my ex and I decided to end our relationship. It was tough. But being an independent woman, it just had to stop. The relationship took a toll on me. I don't know how I survived it, honestly. But God, family, and friends made me realize if anybody's worthy of all the love in the world, it's me. I've given so much, I don't deserve to even give up my life for some guy. Any of this ringing home for any of you? If it does, I hope it helps you. There's another one. I realized that self-love was important when I felt ill. I didn't realize stress could add to a person falling ill when everything else, food, workout, relationships, seemed to be in place. I realized that I've got to love myself first before I could give it out to anyone else. Now, another one. I realized the importance of self-love after a busy, stressful week left me burnt out. I'm still learning not to push myself too far. Here's one from Florida. As I got older, I found myself comparing myself more and more to others and focusing on my imperfections. I realized self-love is an exercise and something I have to work on every day. It is to improve my quality of life. But like I said, it's an exercise, and that's not always easy. We talked before. It's not always easy, but it's well worth it. There's another one from Texas. There was never one aha moment for me. Instead, there was a year of difficulties. I bought my first home, had said home broken into, was promoted at work, graduated with my Master's of Library Science, and contracted mono. Again, I was diving full force into everything, traveling at the speed of light to be the best I could be at home and at work. I started to fall apart emotionally and physically. I decided I wasn't doing it anymore. I didn't want to set a precedent that I would have to fit my family, our future children, into. I wanted to do some things for me. Here's someone from North Carolina. When I noticed I was hitting the same roadblocks in life, I realized that it's me that needs to adjust. I need to love and respect myself more to get what I want out of life. Here's one from Minnesota. I realized the importance of self-love while trying to stay positive in my worst days. I'm the kind of person who overthinks even the smallest issues. I have so many ideas and thoughts inside my head that by the end of the day, I get nothing done. The important point with that, because many times we are very much in our head, remember Take the, you start in your head and just take the ladder down and walk down the steps till you get back to your heart and go, wait a minute, is this good for me? Or even take the elevator down and say, in the elevator, is this good for me? Here's another one from Kansas. My anxiety started getting really out of control. I was losing friends. I wasn't myself and I wasn't happy. There was a day I couldn't take it anymore. So I went home, drew a bath, and just cried it out. But then I got out. I felt so much better. I decided I needed to start taking more baths to help me relax. I didn't realize I was doing self-love until a few weeks later. And then I decided to make it a weekly routine to add extra time if need be. Here's one from Missouri. After a five-year relationship ended suddenly, I was lost in depression and anxiety for years. I didn't invest in myself. I just tried to get by. 
eventually opened up my family to my family how broken I was and they encouraged me to start therapy. This was the beginning of a long journey to self-love. See, the self-love journey isn't always just a walk in the park because we do have baggage in our backpack. But, you know, all these stories, I think it just shows people were strong enough and courageous enough and brave enough and determined enough to be with themselves, to dig around in that backpack and see what needed to be changed, see how they could love themselves and do it their way. To be to themselves what they needed to be to themselves. So think about that. What do you need? Self-love is a wonderful journey. I encourage you to love yourself. But you know, by golly, you are absolutely worth it. You've been listening to the I Am Heart Show. This is Sue McDaniel. We are on Bold Brave Media Talk Radio and Tune In Radio. Your, your, your challenge is to love you because you're worth it, everybody. This has been I Am Heart Radio with your host, Sue McDaniel. Join us each week at this time where connecting our hearts to a loving energy is offered by the universe on I Am Heart Radio. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.